That's how you take your shit. Look at these toilet. That's a good example of the toilet. Phase two. You might need different positioning. Two special mechanics. First one is wing mechanic. There will be uh, one, two, three, four, five orbs in, in the middle. And there will be three clones of the VKs. So three people need to check out the wings of those wings of each three clones. Uh, when other four people, other five people take their orbs and when we see the three red orbs above their characters, then that means we got to find the clones have two open wings. That is the first safe zone. There will be three safe zone around the clones. You will see. <clears throat> Let me show you with the actual mechanic this mechanic we call it onion rings because it looks like it looks like onion ring when you get hit by these onion rings you get stunned explode slowly so you 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 will have plenty time to dodge it and for point of view of support player using your awakening as soon as possible is is always better because you will get, you will earn some gauge, identity gauge, and also you can protect your team <laughs> in the beginning. Look at this, take a look at this. When she jumps backward like this, that is the uh, signal of the counter mechanic. So, so some of them, some of our team just hit the counter successfully. We, we could have some big time to do some damage. So that is the moment your team use their awakening or their big skills and for the support players using their damage buff even those identity is damage buff too like three bubbles of courage and this mechanic we call it that Kaluda in shorter form uh decal that is the aiming aiming line so we gotta keep rotating in clockwise that is the regular rule for the all other parties we are rotating in clockwise to dodge that aim so that is why you don't you don't want to be too close to the other players and this one this one people call this mechanic Zaya you you see the similar move similar effect right that is why and this is the purple ring purple ring pick a target with this another purple ring on their character so this purple wing will follow the tar a targeted person and the other guys will have this red target mark and on the spot where was your character on We'll get some exploding area, same uh, like like this. That is why you guys keep moving, but you don't want to put your your trap on the other characters, on the other players. The purple targeted person keep pinging on the map where he's going, so we can dodge the big explosion from that purple ring. That is the big explosion of the purple ring. When the guy, when the person who got the purple targeted mark hits the, the purple ring, then except for that small area, uh, the explosion will happen. So that is why usually purple ring targeted person dribble that purple ring all the, all the way to the other side of the map, almost like a edge of the map. And the other guys need to escape from that side. You see another pre-counter animation. She jumps backward, right? That is the moment you can prepare your counter. And this is the wings mechanic. I got my own orb like this and as you can see three purple three purple means two close wings three three red means two open wings and the guy who was checking the three o'clock clone says uh open wings and so that is why we are going to the the place where the guy checked out open wings of the clone and that is the first safe zone 
And to the half, uh, one open wing. And finally... To the other one. That's how you survive. It's a signal of the counter mechanic. When after she throw every of these rings, that is the moment you can hit the counter. When she flies up like this with this channeling, that means she will explode in front of her, not behind of her. So behind of her is a safe zone. And you better move your character to behind of the VKs. See? Look at this explosion. And that is the long animation mechanic. So this is the good timing to use your Ninave side rail skill to do some big damage. This is the mechanic what we call Pikachu because that blue blue AoE paralyzed people like this. The gun lancer in my team got paralyzed because of that Pikachu mechanic. So I cleanse him with this portal. My portal portal skill has some cleanse. So I save this guy. So usually it goes like outside safe zone, inside paralyze zone, and then inside safe zone two times. And then inside paralyze zone, so outside safe zone. So you can just remember this like outside, inside, inside, and outside. Outside, inside two times, and go outside. And I already knew this gun lancer got slow movement speed, so I knew that guy will get paralyzed again. I moved out and I saw that Gun Lancer still doing doing damage in there. Greedy. So I saw him paralyzed, get paralyzed, so cleanse him again. You can get some lesson from that. Greedy people dies first. Don't get too greedy. And this is the mechanic we usually call waffles. Cause you can you see the underground then the the pattern on the ground looks like a waffle that is why Korean players usually call this mechanic waffle and that is the moment I usually use my awakening to to give them some shield in case of they fail to dodge the the floor the ground and this wall this wall push your character away so when your character got pushed by this wall, then your character can be in danger of these red zones. So that is why I use my awakening in there. And these, these means that character got the poop, some debuff. After the timer of the debuff gone, you will put some orb on your spot on your character's location and this line means that orb will aim at this direction so that is why people put their character outside of the map and aim that line outside if you put that orb inside of the map aim at that inside of the map then the orb will shoot at your team and that bullet will cc your team so that caused some big issues And this is the color orb mechanic. How do you know the colors of the orbs? By these shock waves. Red. Red and black. Black and red. So red, red, black, black, red, right? So we only take the third one and the fourth one. Not the other ones on this position. So two people usually put their position on 7 and 5, 7 o'clock, 5 o'clock and 11 o'clock. And the reason why I move my character to, to the 5 o'clock, they call out, they got three, 3 black shock waves. That means this clone will shoot the 3 black orbs. And we gotta stop the VKs absorbing uh, black orbs. So we gotta block the black orbs with our character. 
as you can see, uh, first one on uh, first one at five o'clock is red. Second one black, red, black, red, black, black. They need three three characters, three players here, because if you eat more than two of the black orbs, your character will get killed, one shot it immediately. So when you uh, when you when your team got eight people, then you you don't need to use your time stop to get uh, more than two of them. But if you lose your any of your team, then you gotta use your time stop to take two orbs at least to block every black orbs but it's kind of tricky to use the time stop because time stop is hard to know when is time stop effects gone so it's really tricky so red one and black one red one we don't take black one this guy take i will take the last one and then it's done Right after the, the special mechanic, main main mechanic, usually both got stunned or knocked down. So that is the great time to use your big skills, main skills, like awakenings and stuff. And that is the good point, good spot, and good timing to use your awakening shield and the damage buff with your identity gauge when you play support. See, these people got the poops. What do you do? What do you do when you feel like poop? You take a shit outside, not in, not in door, right? In toilet only. Just like that. And this is the mukbang. We call it mukbang because those tentacles will swallow your character. You see these stones, these poops. These poops are shooting some bullets, right? These bullets can CC the people. So there is a whole point. You must put your shit outside, not inside of the map. Oh, this animation with these rings signal of the counter mechanic. After we hit the counter, she jumps back, jumps back, right? That is also another counter mechanic the uh, signal of the counter mechanic but we just hit the counter successfully so this time that counter mechanic got a in the cooldown time so we cannot counter this time so you gotta move away when she does it after right after you hit the counter and the descaluda mechanic again rotating and clockwise to not get hit by this laser and sometimes when you hit by attack, then you, you will get this uh, line, right? The, the shit, the poop. In the situation of the waffle mechanic, what, what you need to do, what you must do is go outside even though you got hit by the attacks. Because you don't want to put your shit inside of the, the place that can CC the people and that you don't want to imagine that, right? That's a nightmare. If you put inside of that map, in the situation of the waffle mechanic, then it your your shit can CC your team, then your your team get can get killed with that waffles. So no matter what, when you got the shit on your character, just go outside. If you if you die, if you die because of that, people will, will not blame you because of that. Look at this toilet. That's a good example of the toilet. That's how you take your shit. Aim outside, put the shit outside of the map. Counter again. See, that is the counter. Signal of the counter again. We hit the counter and another guy is taking their shit And done phase two done